Hi, today I'm going to give you an introduction on copper plate calligraphy. Um, the tools I'm going to be using today, um, as you can see, I'm using an oblique holder and the nib is called um, Leona Principle Extra Fine for today. And the ink I'm using is walnut, um, walnut ink and I bought the walnut crystals and I mixed it with water uh, to create the ink, okay? Uh, if you go to my Instagram account, um, you'll find a category called Calligraphy Guide Sheets. And in there, you can download a zip, a zip folder with a collection of blank guide sheets for different calligraphy styles. Okay, so for this one today, uh, the guidelines look more or less like that. Yeah, and let's explain the important things about copper plate. So first of all, with copper plate, we have five defined areas or units to be working with. As you can see in here, the middle section, it's called the X high. And then we have two heights for the ascenders. And also that one belongs to the cup high and two lengths for the descenders. Okay. The second important thing about copper plate is uh, making sure that all our letters will follow this strong slant. In this case today, we are working with 55 degree slant. And the next thing is obviously looking at this tool because this tool looks very, very different to a regular pen or pencil. So regarding this tool, just a note that I'm using the oblique holder because I'm a right-hander. But if you're a left-hander, you don't need to use this holder. You will use a straight holder with a straight knee, okay? So in my case, I'm a right-hander and I'm using this because it's helping me to get the angle of the writing. And then I'm holding this pen with three fingers, as you see, and the three fingers are really, really close to this elbow in here. So the, my fingers are positioning very, very close to the elbow. Uh, secondly, the position of the pen on my hand. So this is the regular position how we will be holding a regular pencil. But in this case, I very much recommend holding the pen a lot higher. So mostly align to my knuckle lines in here. Okay, not everyone will be exactly hold, holding the pen in the same area, maybe a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher, but mostly higher than the regular position of a pencil in this area on my hand. Uh, the next thing that is very important as well is to make sure that your paper is on an angle. So in here, the position that I'm using to write, the paper is more or less at 45 degrees from my table and my arm is parallel to this 45 degrees. So this angle of the paper and my arm are exactly in the same position in here. Obviously, I'm a right-hander, but if you are a left-hander, try out to turn the paper on the side and see how you feel, obviously, on the other side in here, okay? Uh, otherwise, you can also write with the paper parallel to the table. But being a right-hander, I find that it is a lot easier for me to turn the paper on a 45-degree angle in here, like that. Um, now, how are we going to make sure that we follow this strong slant for the writing, okay? So as I mentioned, my pen is a little bit higher. My fingers are really close to the elbow position. And now the third thing that is very important in here, I'm gonna remove that, is the position of the pen. And I have to make sure, as you can see in here, that my pen is completely parallel to the slant. To the diagonal lines. So when I'm writing, my pen is not there or there, which is almost perpendicular to the slant. My pen is always sitting on the same line as the slant. And now when I apply pressure, you will see how the nib splits. And this nib is quite flexible, so it will split nearly three millimeters, okay? If you are a beginner with copper plate, 
instead of using the nip I'm using in here, I very much recommend you to be using a Nico G or a Zebra G. Okay, so these two options, um, not this one, this one, these two options are very much recommended if you're a beginner. So I will leave the notes on this video uh, because these nips are a little bit less flexible and easier to um, control at the beginning if you're a beginner with Copy Club. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a blank paper on top so I can see the lines through, as you can see here. I'm going to secure the pen, uh, I'm going to secure the paper, the two guidelines next to each other and now for you to see it easier I'm gonna turn my camera so that you can see my letters completely upright here and I'm gonna go a little bit closer to the paper as well so that you can see what I'm writing a little bit easier okay. like that and then I'm going to focus excellent and load the focus in here. So we have the nib, the paper, the ink, and now we are going to start writing. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the basic movements uh, for the lowercase alphabet. So from here, uh, the movements I'm going to be doing, and again, pay attention that the nib has to be always following the slant line. Okay, so the nib is not there or there, but is always parallel. So to start, I'm going to be moving the pen very, very soft against the paper, creating a really, really thin upper stroke. Okay, I'm going up and touching the paper very, very, very soft, applying absolutely no pressure. I'm now using that's one unit of my next high, and in this case, it's two units, and I'm going to go up from the base of the X high to the long ascender line, okay? Just warming up with the movements. Um, now I'm going down and still not applying absolutely any pressure. So I'm studying inside the X high. I'm now using the short ascender line till the base of the X high and now I'm using the three units from the long ascender line till the base line. Okay, that's just a warming up exercise. Now what I'm doing next is I'm going to start to apply pressure. Okay, so with copper plate every time we go up it's going to be a very soft movement going up and every time we go down it's going to be a thick movement and let's try and see how much we can press okay so now I'm gonna go down I'm gonna use the area inside the X high only first so thick movement I'm gonna go up till the next line for the shorter centers and press again and I'm going to go up all the way till the long ascended line and follow the slant all the way down. Okay, the most important part in here is trying to get a thickness across all this area that is very consistent so that we don't have thin and thick. So let's try to press a lot more now just to see the difference. Okay, you see the difference between middle pressure and high pressure and maybe I can even do higher than that and get it a little bit thicker. Okay, uh, for copper plate it is not important how much we press, we need to decide how much we press. Okay, so this is different styles in terms of how strong are you applying pressure? And you will need to decide which one represents better your style of copper plate. Okay, so any of these will be fine. 
It's just deciding which one we want and creating consistency, okay? Um, now, let's start with the first letter forms. So I'm gonna start with letter I. And for letter I in the lowercase alphabet, I'm going to go up with a very soft movement. And then I will be going down following the slant. And then I will be releasing the pressure completely before I'm turning around the corner. Okay, so we have this movement up and then I will be going down. Okay, so let's put the movement together. I'm gonna go up really, really soft. I'm gonna turn to the right to make sure the top of my eye is flat. And I'm turning to the right even one millimeter or less than that, and it is good enough to get a flat top. And then from here, I'm gonna be pressing down, following the slant and quickly releasing pressure to turn around the corner. Okay, so with this first movement, we need to look at a couple of things. First of all, we need to look at a point that I call reference point, which is happening halfway inside the X high. And we need to look at this point for a couple of reasons, okay? The first of all is because this I call is a meeting point. And it is the point where the thin and thick stroke meets or the thin and thick stroke goes away. So this is going to be consistent across all the letters we are going to be doing. The same meeting point halfway inside the X high, it's also for the exit stroke. So this exit stroke is going to be long up to more or less half of the X high in here, in this section. Now we need to place the dot or tittle of the eye so normally the dot will be sitting between the top of the short ascenders and the top of the X high, also in the middle. So I'm gonna be placing a small dot in the middle between the top of the X high and the top of the short ascender line, okay? Uh, in some cases, this dot will be maybe higher or lower, depending what we are writing. And in some cases, um, I tend to do an elongated shape which might not be um, classically copper plate, but I still do it because I like the look of it, okay? So now, to start doing letter I, and to make sure that we have this meeting point in the right place, it might be beneficial to just do a small mark, like I did now, uh, in the center of the XI, and with this small mark, I'm going to be crossing the reference point, the meeting point. I'm gonna go up very, very soft, top of the X high, turning to the right, applying pressure and releasing. And from here, dot or elongated shape for letter I, okay? Depending on them. You see how much I press in here and how much I press in here. So the thick strokes are really different. And this is very much worth taking care of, okay? So do I wanna go with this look? Or do I want to go with this look that is a lot thinner? Okay, now let's repeat this movement again. Let's go into letter U by repeating letter I twice. So again, I'll do a tiny mark in the center of the X high for me to have a, as a reference point. And then I'm going to go up really thin, going to the right, even one millimeter or less, going down, releasing the pressure and going up again. Going to the right, pressing down, releasing. And by repeating the movement of letter I, I obtain letter E. Okay? And now for the first time, we have the first letter of this idea. You see how the meeting point is roughly on both places the same. And by having the same area, I'm obtaining this triangle shape or negative space in here in both of the um, negative spaces of letter E. Okay? So how wide are my letters in the copper plate alphabet in the lowercase? All these letter forms are based on the oval shape. And the oval shape 
is basically an oval that the height is two times the width. And this is a very good and this is a very good um, measurement for understanding the proportions of this oval and also for picturing the width of this O because this O is framing my oval, okay? And I have to see that the width, uh, the height is twice the width as a measurement in here, okay? Uh, now, let's do more shapes. Let's do letter J. So letter J, it's by definition a long I. So the shape at the top of the J is exactly the same as the shape of the I. So very, very thin going up, uh, flat top, and then from here, following the slant, and this time I'm going to go all the way to the very long descender line. I'm going to go around, crossing the center, sorry, crossing on the baseline of the X high, and the dot in the same direction, okay? So differences. This time we are doing a letter form that has three units. Okay, this is the X high, and in here is the short descender line and the long descender line. And we are placing the pen and going all the way to the long descender line in here. Now, I release pressure before turning around the corner. So in terms of pressure, what I'm doing here is applying most of my pressure in this section. And then from here, from the show the center line, I'm starting to release pressure, preparing to go around the corner. Okay, this area in here, it's called the loop. So let's do this again and repeat the movement of letter J. I'm going to be a little bit of ink, okay, and I will repeat it again. So notice that the reference point is happening in the center of the X high again. So going up very thin, turning to the right, applying pressure to go down parallel to the slant, starting to release pressure, going around the corner, going up really thin, crossing on the baseline of the X high, and exit. And now dot or elongated shape for the J. Uh, the next thing we will need to take care is we are looking for consistency, so we are going to have to take care of the width are very similar, and the loops are going to be looking very similar. So in this case, this one is a little bit bigger and we need to decide which one do we go with, okay? So we are looking for consistency across this alphabet. Now, the next letter form we are gonna be doing is letter T. And letter T, same as letter J, same as letter I, starts with the same movements. So notice again, the meeting point, halfway inside the X high, and the same is gonna happen for letter T, okay? So letter T has the movements of a letter I with the difference that is a little bit taller. So this time I'm going to go all the way up to the first or short ascender line. In here, I'm going to repeat the same movement I did with letter I's and J's to get a flat top. So I'm going up and I'm going to move to the right, even if it's one millimeter to ensure that I have a flat top. From here, I'm going to be pressing down, following the slant, and rounding around the corner and exit, okay? So meeting point, roughly in the middle. Uh, make sure you release pressure before turning around the corner. And now we need to place the bar of this T. And to place the bar of this T, you can either do a straight line like that in the middle between the top of the X high and the top of the short ascender line, or you could be 
fancy pens and create a double turn or compound curve. Okay, so uh, let's start again with the letter T to do the second version. Up, 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 all the way till the shorter center line. And from here, pressing down, following the slant and release around the corner. Now, this time I'm going to do an elongated and curvy shape, okay? And it's more or less in the middle of the X high as well, okay? Um, if I had double T's, which in English is very, very common, I will write the two T's next to each other and then the crossbar will be unifying the two T's and it's called a ligature, okay? So I'm going to repeat this movement up, going to the right, follow the slant, up, going to the right, follow the slant, exit. Uh, now, things I need to be looking at is be careful because the meeting point in here is higher and in this case is correct, okay? So we don't want to have that. We want to have the two T's with the same meeting point. Second of all, the space between the two T's need to be an oval shape. So the same shape as my U shape. So we might need to place the two T's closer to each other. Okay, because it's getting too wide, this is spacing. So again, pin, up, going to the right and going down. And now I repeat the movement again, going back up, going to the right and going down. All right, this time the meeting points are good and the space between them is exactly the space of my U that you can see in here. So now the spacing between the T's is correct. And by doing a crossbar like that, I'm just unifying the two T's at the same time. And this is called a ligature. Okay? So last letter form for this group. For this group, we have a letter P. And the first letter P traditionally has the same height as letter T. So the movement I just did with letter T, I will repeat it again with letter P. Um, and again, I'm going down. And this time I'm stopping in this section in here. Okay, so it's the same length as the T and now all the way down. Now things to take care of that it might happen. Number one, the meeting point is a little bit higher, so we don't want that. We want to have it in the center. Number two, this movement is getting off a slant. And definitely, I want to keep all my letter forms in this slant, so the slant is not happening. Okay, you see it's very wobbly. So what I would do in here is make sure that this movement, which is long because it's using three units, this movement is not only finger movement, it's actually hand movement. So I'm going to be pulling the skin on my hand across the paper instead of only moving the finger, which is going to make the letter going off a slant like that. But if I only move the finger movement, the natural movement of my hand is like that. And by doing this finger movement, I'm definitely losing the slant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the hand and not the finger movement so that this doesn't lose the slant. Okay, let's move back across and let's do it. Okay. So what I'm doing in here is the movement of the T, first of all. So I'm going up all the way up till the shorter center line. I'm going to the right and I'm going to be pressing down here. So this time I move my hand and not only the 
finger movement, I just move the hand down and I'm getting now the good slant in here. Okay, again, thin up and down. Okay, uh, you see I'm pressing more, I'm pressing less. So I need to decide which one do I want to go with. Up to the right and down. Okay, I'm gonna go with the last one. And this is the first um, movement of my letter P. Now, the movement I'm doing now with this letter P, I'm going to do a movement called double turn. And this double turn starts by the baseline of the X high and going up, turning around the corner, push, following the slant, release, up. Okay? And both of these areas should be very similar in terms of width. Let's do this again. I'm going up, very, very thin, turning around, push, following the slant, turning again, exit. Okay. Uh, visually, we need to see the an oval on both sides of this double turn. Okay. Uh, secondly, I'm going to make sure that the area where I'm applying pressure is only this section in here. Okay. So when I'm going up, down, up, that's what I'm doing with the uh, nip. The area where I'm applying pressure, it's basically only this section in here. Okay, so I'm going around the corner and it's thin and goes back to thin. Let's do this again. Okay, so I'm going up very thin, around the corner, push, release, and thin again. And I need to make sure that these areas are very similar in both sides and I also need to make sure that it's not too wide. Now let's build letter P. So first of all, we go up till the shoulder center line. I move my hand down following the slant. Now, with the meeting point, I'm gonna look at this meeting point again, okay? I'm starting with the pen in the baseline or of the X high and the thin goes away from the thick, roughly in the center. Thick and thin. All right. Um, off is land. So I'm going to say not here. This movement is not following the slant. The movement needs to follow the slant completely. Okay, so you see the differences. Let's do this again. Now, going up and flat top. And then you can place the pen on the base of the X high or if you want straight in the middle, whatever is more comfortable. Going around, going down, exit. Okay, and that is the letter P that I want to see here. So I want to see a letter P that is framing my oval shape and both of these areas are the same and the meeting point is roughly the same. Okay, so uh, personally I find this P is too tall so what I do is I normally only use half of this area for the P. So I'm gonna do the same just a little bit shorter. Going up Press, follow the slant, uh, go back to the base, thin, going away, push, up, 
Now I'm going to write the first word, and the first word is put. So I'm going to join letter P with the beginning of the U. Flat top at the top. Going up. Flat top again. Exit and crossbar. Okay, uh, you see here that the area is a little bit too big, so this is important to get in consideration. I just slightly retouched now, I think it was slightly too big. How do I know? Because I'm looking at these negative spaces and they are all the same. And then I'm looking at the space inside the letter and the space between the letters are exactly the same or more or less the same. Okay, so this is the pattern that I want to see with copyright. Space inside and in between are all the same. The slant, everything follows the slant. The thin and thick, always the same, going up thin, going down very thick. Okay. And the last thing that is very important, every letter form has the same width with a couple of exceptions. And this width is based on an oval shape where the height is two times the width. Okay, so this is um, a very good ratio to remember for looking at the oval shape, which is inside every single one of these. I hope this introduction was helpful um, and get in touch if you have any questions.